Ben Whiting with Paddle TV with yet another in-depth unbiased gear review. And in this video, I am testing this sucker right here. This is the Decathlon Itawit X500. And this is a kayak that I've been wanting to test for a very long time. In fact, a lot of you have asked me to test this kayak. I might have more requests to test this kayak than any other kayak. It is an inflatable touring, sit inside touring kayak, and that's not a normal thing. And that's why I'm excited to test this thing. It's made by Decathlon. Now, a lot of you in North America may have never heard the name Decathlon before, and that's because they haven't been in North America very long, but they're very well established in Europe. They are, they've been around for over 50 years in Europe and they make all sorts of outdoor gear and they've got a great reputation because they uh, do all their own R&D and they do all their own manufacturing in-house. And so they control their products very well. They, they do spend a lot of time, energy, money, on the development of products. That's why I'm excited to test this boat, but it certainly doesn't mean it's a good boat or the right boat for you. And that's what this video is about. So let's get this thing pumped up and I'm gonna tell you a bit more about it. The Edewit X500 retails for 1300 US dollars. It's 12 feet, six inches long. It's 25 inches wide. It weighs 35 pounds or 16 kilos. It has a max capacity of 275 pounds for optimum performance. And its primary use is for all conditions. The X500 has a standard large cockpit with a cockpit rim that accepts a skirt. It has ultra durable carry handles at either end. It has bungees on the bow deck for storing gear. It has a padded raised seat, adjustable foot pegs, and a dry bag style access port in the back deck. The entire boat is drop stitch construction, which allows you to pump it up nice and firm to 10 PSI. Well, I was really excited to test this kayak, and now I'm even more excited because I think it looks really nice. It's the first inflatable kayak I think that I've ever seen that really has the shape and lines of a hard shell touring kayak. And so I think that should translate into really nice performance, but we'll find out. And the only way to find out is to get it on the water, and that's what I'm gonna go do. And I'm also, I'm in Georgia right now uh, on my spring road trip, and I'm also gonna be getting my first taste of the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge. And we're going on a mission. We're doing about 11 miles of paddling today, so I better stop talking and start paddling. Let's go. That was an amazing paddle. Amazing paddle for two reasons. What a place this is. The Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge is awesome. You definitely have to put it on your list. But also, it was a great opportunity to test this boat and I really had a fun time paddling this boat. But without spoiling it, let me break it down like I always do. And we're gonna start with portability. It's a portable kayak. It fits in a backpack. Okay, high marks for portability. But some things to note the pack that this thing comes with has adjustable straps and it's like a backpack it's adjustable it has the hip belt and the shoulder belt that's nice a lot of them just have the shoulder belt which you can't carry it for long that way but these straps are also very adjustable so good marks for the pack the only small thing is uh it's not there's not a lot of extra room it's not super tight so i got the boat back in to the bag 
fairly easily, but you do have to do it right. I'm a guy that likes a little bit more extra room in the bag because I would get lazy, especially at the end of the day. I've gone for a long paddle. I just want to get the boat in the bag and get out of there. So anyway, very small thing. Now, this thing's 35 pounds, 39 pounds or 40 pounds with the bag, but 35 pounds for the kayak is not a lot. For a 12 and a half foot long kayak, that's great. So easy to carry around. On top of that, it's very well padded. It's so soft. So putting it on your shoulder, much more comfortable to carry this than it is to carry a hard shell kayak. So all in all, top marks for portability for this thing. Let's just jump right to performance because that's what I was really interested in with this kayak or most in interested in. How did it perform? Well, to cut right to the chase, this is the first kayak inflatable or uh, inflatable kayak that I've paddled that truly performs as well as a hard shell kayak. And that's, that is something special. It's something that I think a lot of inflatable kayaks try to do, but have never really done. At least none that I have tried to this point have done. This thing, I could hardly tell that it wasn't a hard shell kayak. The fact that it's, it's drop stitch construction plays a big roll it's it's rigid it, there's no flex in this thing but somehow they also made this beautiful beautiful uh water cutting shape with the inflatable compartments there's five inflatable car compartments in this thing two on the sides one on the floor and then two bridges that provide structural integrity here but the way this hull cuts through the water was as i hoped it would Fantastic. Now let's jump to stability. This is a 25 inch wide kayak. Now a 25 inch wide kayak is typically considered a wreck touring kayak or a touring kayak. You give up some stability when you drop to 25 inches wide uh, because you want more speed, more performance. And that's what you get with this thing. It performs very well. How much stability do you give up though? Well, what I can tell you is it's primary stability. When I was just sitting in it and paddling around in this thing, yeah, it's not as stable as a big, flat, wide recreational kayak. Definitely not, but very stable. I really had no problems with it at all. I was never feeling unstable. Now, it's secondary stability is, uh, secondary stability is when you hold a kayak on edge. Uh, there, how balanced it, how balanced is it on edge? Now, its secondary stability left a little to be desired. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible by any means, but it didn't just let, some kayaks, they go on edge and they just balance there beautifully. They lock into place. This one doesn't quite do that. When you get it on edge, it feels a little bit more unstable. Trade two, you know, two things to go with that hey, really easy to get this thing on edge. So if you're gonna be paddling in rough conditions, it's very easy to maneuver. Downside, the slight downside there is it doesn't have rock solid stability on edge. And so that says to me, a beginner paddler would hop in this thing and if it got on edge at all, they could really find that unstable. Anyway, something to note, comfort. Let's talk about a few things here. Space, this thing, has quite a bit of foot room. I am 34 inches long in the leg. I'm six foot two. I'm not a small guy, but I had plenty of foot room in here. Not tons, but plenty for my feet. Now the foot pegs were, there's a little bit more room to go, but not a lot. So I would say if you're six four or any taller, then you're you may be pushing this boat. I would say six four, six five is the absolute limit of this kayak, but for someone my size, it's it's good. Otherwise, comfort, it's got these wonderful foot pegs in here. Great support, easy to adjust, and actually the foot peg system that's in here is just awesome. It's the best portable foot peg system that I've come across, hands down. Now let's talk about the seat. Now, portable kayaks in general, one of the big things you kind of expect is you're going to give up some comfort for the kayak's portability. Is that the case with the X500? Yes, you do. You give up some comfort for the portability. The seat, it's not a bad seat. Um, it's actually, there's some nice things to it. The way it's designed and locks into place is very nice. Good high back support on it. 
It's, it's slightly elevated off the floor, so if there's water in here somehow, you're not just sitting in a puddle of water. So some good things here, but it's a piece of foam, effectively. It's just a piece of foam rather than like a suspension seat. Hard shell kayaks, they have they, have, they can have more robust, bigger seats uh, that, because they don't have to worry about it being portable and they are more comfortable. Now, I have to say that, um, <laughs> letting you know that I just finished a 24 hour drive down from Canada to Georgia. I've been sitting on my butt for 24 hours in my truck. My butt is not in the greatest of shape. Not to mention yesterday, I was kayak fishing, sitting down all day kayak fishing for the day. So my butt is in, not in primo condition right now. So maybe it wasn't the best time to test a comfort of a seat, but still, I do think you're giving up some comfort here versus, not versus another inflatable, but versus another hard shell kayak. Oh, uh, one other note about comfort actually, before I move on, your knees fit underneath the sides here. There's no thigh hooks or anything like that, but the foam in here is actually very comfortable. It was just, a, it was a comfortable experience all in all, except for my butt got tired after a few hours. It was about two or three hours in where I started, started to squirm a little. So now let's talk features. The features of the X500 are pretty typical for um, a day touring kayak. It's got some bungees up front here to store gear or a day pack under. You can, it's got this little pouch here to slide your paddle under if you need to to stow your paddle for whatever reason. Instead of perimeter lines, like a lot of touring kayaks have, it has these perimeter straps on the bow and stern, both sides, and they serve the same purpose as something to grab hold of, something that can uh, help with your rescues. At the back here, um, one of the features is the dry bag style uh, opening to the, the back compartment. Now this isn't, there's no bulkhead here. There's no wall back here that separates this stern compartment from the, the front of the kayak at all. So if you had water in here, if it's swamped, water's going back and forth. So anything that goes in here needs to be in dry bags. It's not dry. But um, this is a great feature for, for an inflatable kayak, having access to the back. It opens up the world of possibilities for multi-day trips. It's not exactly what you'd call a rich featured kayak. It's got everything you need though. Uh, one, uh, one thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have a rudder or a skeg. But when I was talking about the performance of this thing before, you don't need one with this boat. At 12 foot, six inches long, it tracks well. You know, it's got great speed. You really don't need a rudder and skeg in this thing. Maybe if you're paddling in really windy conditions and you're dealing, paddling long distances with a cross a wind or a beam wind, you're, you'd get a bit tired. But really, if you're dealing with those kinds of conditions regularly, you probably want to go with a longer kayak with a rudder or a skeg. This wouldn't be um, maybe the, the, not the right kayak. Before I move on past features, one feature I want to actually elaborate on is, is the cockpit here, the cockpit rim, the skirt that you can use with this thing. Now this is the Itowit skirt this, that, that they sell that specifically for this kayak. Now this skirt here fits really well on here. The one they sent me is a small medium and I ain't a small medium. Actually, I don't think I ever was a small medium, but um, this one fits very well. You can see that it's, it's holding its place. Now, if you've got a really good wave dropping on this thing, it will likely implode. So this thing isn't designed to withstand real white, heavy white water, big waves that are gonna crash down or ocean surf that's gonna crash on top, but it actually provides a really nice seal. But one thing to note, this bungee rand is quite narrow. I'm not sure what the exact size is on this thing, but the bungee skirt that I have, there's no way it's gonna fit under this cockpit rim. It's just too thick. So you've gotta make sure that you have a pretty narrow uh, bungee rim or spend the money and get one of their skirts. And that kind of brings us to who is this kayak for? And it really, I think this is, this is a kayak that you can take in a lot of different conditions. They say it's a all conditions touring kayak and I would agree with that. If you're wearing a skirt, you can definitely, I'd be very comfortable taking this kayak into class two whitewater for sure. I'd probably even push it a bit and put it into some three, depending on how comfortable I was. This would be the weak spot right here, the skirt, rather than the boat itself. Um, but really, the class two and below, all conditions of, of 
of ocean, all ocean conditions and lake conditions, except for big waves that can implode your skirt. So yes, very much an all conditions boat, but it, it's not a boat I would say, and they don't say it's designed for beginners either. They say it's for the mid-level paddler and I would totally agree with that. This is for someone who's, uh, who's got some experience paddling and wants a boat that's fun to paddle. They don't want to just get out on the water and enjoy a beautiful sunset or just a day in the sun on the water. They want to do that but they also want a boat that's fun to paddle, that slices through the water, they can cover real distance with, go into some challenging water with. A beginner who has that mindset could use this kayak and be very happy in it because it's stable enough for a, an adventuresome beginner, but uh, it's not for all beginners, that's for sure. To finish off, we'll talk value. This thing retails for 1300 US dollars, <laughs> straight up. That's exceptional value in my mind. A hard shell kayak of this nature costs around, you can expect it's going to cost around there. You can get some cheaper ones than that for sure. But of this nature, comparable, you're looking at 1200 to 1300 US dollars. So you're paying a very small premium for the portability of this thing. What are you giving up? Well, you're giving up, in my opinion, a little bit of comfort and that's to be expected. You, you have to expect to give up something for the portable nature of a kayak. But, um, you know, if you're spending eight hour days regularly in this boat, it'll make a difference. If you're only going out for an hour or two, probably not that big of a difference. It really comes down to is portability something you need? You can fit this thing in the trunk of your car. You can fit the store this thing in your closet at home. And so for many people, there really isn't an option between hard shell and inflatable kayak. And if you want a kayak of this nature, this exceptional value, great performance, all in all, I do give this boat two thumbs up. Really like it. This is a boat that's gonna stay in my quiver. I am going to continue to use this boat. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and please leave a comment down below if you have anything to add to this conversation because I paddled it for a long way today. But it, that doesn't compare to someone who's owned one of these things and paddled it for many days and has a lot more experience. Share your experience, please, with everybody. Let us know what you've learned. Let me know if I'm off base in any way. If you have any questions, fire them on uh, down below and we'll see you again soon for another paddling tip, another gear review, or a paddling adventure like the ones here at the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge. And now I have to stop talking and go do some packing because tomorrow I leave on a three-day kayak camping trip in to the swamp.